Hey guys, Levy Freeman here, and uh, we're just going to wrap up our Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiser Mod campaign here as uh, League of East Chinese Provinces. We just have to kill Xinjiang clique and we've unified China, so we're just, we're just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, this is going to be the last video in the campaign. And uh, yeah, let's take a loan, sure. I don't think I'll ever be able to assume national leadership because I'm the only China left. And we need to get our war support up. Enemy bombing. I guess that's uh... So they've just got like probably Uyghur militias and stuff. It's like we'll just we'll just roll them, and this will be fine. Sure, we can send in the army. We have negative ten percent for an offensive war. Do we have anything that gets us war support? I don't think we have anything that's left that would get us that. So we let ourselves get bombed, I guess. Uh, I don't know. For negative 29.2%. So I probably should not have, uh... Resources to market, 0%. That seems helpful. I don't think that did what it said it was going to do on the tin, though. Oh, uh, we'll build up. Uh, we'll build up some factories here, I guess. Other decisions, return Ukrainian lands. Sure, I can have the land back, it's fine. Mop these guys up already, come on. Man, these guys have a lot of divisions. I think I just shit militias up. And you guys. Oh, yeah, oh, finally, 1955. I think we, we did it before the official game end, though. So, I mean, that's nice. Yeah, just pick up a few extra provinces along the way.
They lost half a million guys already? Jeez. Alright, there we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. Do we get to integrate that province? Looks like no. Looks like no. It's a bit sad. All right, well that's our, I guess, our game there that we got. So factions, all that's left is the Third International and Buenos Aires Lima Axis. So I mean, that's interesting, I guess. And, you know, like. It's difficult to fit all of our stuff on one screen. But there's a nice, uh, there's a nice screen cap. You may not, you may not like it, but this is what peak retro looks like. All right, so that was like a pretty long and grueling campaign, uh, but we did it. Uh, we we, uh, we really brought the League of Eight or League of East Chinese Provinces into. Uh, you know, into forests as it, as it should be. I mean, we could go take the legation cities and, you know, kill Australasia, but I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, like, you know, I think I've, I've had enough of this game. I, I did the, I did the stuff. I beat, I beat the Russians and we're at, we're at peace. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go pick a fight with the, with the Australasians. And like, there's, there's probably like, there's no way we're going to lose that fight. I don't think, uh, of course, maybe they maybe they have. Uh, let's check their let's check their their shit here. So, because we could get fucked like Sabinkov got fucked. They're on extensive conscription. They don't have that much manpower. Yeah. So no, there's no way we lose to the Australasians, and their their factions already disbanded. So, uh, we could we could take the legation cities and then build a navy and beat them and then keep on taking our decisions to get a war support up to get back to uh back to like partial mobilization or something uh, i mean we could probably live with our uh, our division penalty as it is and we have uh we just trained a bunch of guys in the meantime to deploy them when we hit our cap uh, we have like tons of equipment tons of equipment lying around uh, so that was that was their game over there, and like I think that kind of like nails. Like if you saw what happened there at the end. Like we got we got fucked over here. It's like you definitely don't want to get off total total mobilization after your war. I think it's it causes like a whole lot of problems. So I think it's probably better just to take the stability hit and spam your st plus stability decisions, or like even just let it get down. I don't think it gets below 10% really. Because uh, you get the uh, you get the weekly plus percent when you're below, like as a natural drift. So you probably just take the hits from stability for being at total mob. That'd be my recommendation. You don't want to take those. Uh... This is really punishing if you look at it for your consumer goods factories. I think it was 25 percent you get if you're over your division cap. Uh, which is even which is going to you know that's definitely worse than being unstable. So I would definitely stay at total mode, but this like, look how fucked up this is. That's uh, that's pretty whack. You got Africa over there, a dog's breakfast. You got Europe, all sorts of fancy colors. It's like we're the only country, like us in India. I guess some of the Australasians and Insulin Indians do like nice blocks of color. Well, that was our that was our campaign. I'm really pissed off that we didn't get to unify as Zhang Zongchang, uh, but we're able to you know do it as uh, as Sun Dian Ying over here. So I mean, like I guess that's pretty cool. I guess that's pretty cool. Let's take another screenshot. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that was like I'm happy with this campaign because like I, I pulled it back. Like if you guys remember when the Burmese were snaking me. The Russians were pushing us in on the front. Like we were, it was like a pretty dire position, and I was able to pull it back. So, uh, 
I, again, I think a big part of that was because of like how broken the division the division uh, cap is. Like, uh, Savinkov should not have been as weak as he was. Uh, it should have taken us a lot longer to overcome his industrial advantage, but he just got fucked because the division cap screwed him, and uh, he got he got locked out, and he wasn't able to increase his mobilization lock because he had too many factories. Uh, so I think that like that needs some serious rework. I think if they're going to make that into late game, uh, it should not be tied to your mobilization law. If they're going to leave the mobilization law as uh, you can't increase it if you have more factories than the enemy. It just makes no sense. Uh, if the whole idea is that you're supposed to have lots of factories, support lots of divisions, then why would you make it worse and have less divisions because you have so many factories? It makes, uh, it makes no sense at all. So uh, I think this game was definitely possible because of the uh, you know the crippling disadvantage that Savinkov had. It would have been a lot harder. Uh, we might have been able to do it still, but he would have been able to re- like replenish his troops and have that 300 division army, and it would have been uh, and we would have 300 divisions to match him as well because we were, we were also on total mode. But like it would have been a a lot more of a grindy slugfest, I think, if he had been able to fight back without his handicap. But in any case, that's our campaign. I hope you enjoyed watching it. This one was a bit of a long one, but uh, 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 going through Siberia as China or like Japan has got to be like one of the most fucking excruciating experiences in this game. And uh, we did it, and we did it against uh, probably as powerful of a Russia as you're realistically going to get. Uh, you know, Russian state that won the Well Creek too. Uh, so I, I feel pretty happy about that. Uh, in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this campaign. This one was a long one. Uh, yeah, that's it. Love you, Freeman. Signing out.